on Beyond the Woods. Our adventuring party had come across a strange entity in a seemingly pocket dimension that met the face of a very large cat, seemingly having many names, but one that it focused on mostly was the Archfey of Happy Thoughts. Upon interrogating this being and it interrogating you back, you found out that apparently this being had been absorbing the dark energy, the evil from the Feywild and other dimensions as well, trying to hold in it, hold it in there. It is why this this area felt so dark and cold when you came to it. And speaking more, learning a bit about what it was trying to protect, you found out that there were evil entities out in the realms made of pure darkness. You said that you'd go out and help destroy one of these and were offered boons for your help in the matter. So off you went, finding the nest of the great deep crow. An enormous black crow dripping with tar, more monstrous than anything you'd encountered before. But together you managed to defeat this foe and find one of its victims, a familiar, a familiar Pierre, who had been wounded quite severely, eyes torn from his face. As the battle ended, Killian found himself by the mutilated body of Pierre, and for a raspy voice he called out mercy, asking for help, not knowing who was there. But while this was going on, Jack, still stuck inside the brambles of the nest, looked out at Killian and Pierre and saw a third figure standing over them, beckoning towards him, issuing a signal. The time had come. The first sacrifice must be made. And that's where we left off. So what's going on now? Uh, How? I guess Jack's trying to fumble his way out of something, but some uh, brambles. All right, roll a strength saving throw for me. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's, what, that's the one you want? 14. 14 is not bad. That's pretty good. Been stuck in there for a while. It took you a little while, but you finally managed to snap one of the branches that was holding you in you in place. Do you want to go out towards into the nest, or you want to come up on top of it? Uh, if I'll I'll go out towards. Yeah, <laughs> might as uh, well. You push through. You fall down into the center of the nest. Killian, you are still standing above Pierre, who's just crippled on the ground, bleeding out. That voice just barely hanging on, asking for your help. Please. Please help. Now, do I have a good berry? <laughs> I'll slip one into his mouth, <laughs> just so he shuts up. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do. I'm pretty sure Jack had passed out some good berries. Yeah. Pull out one of those berries from Pull the pocket. One, put it in his mouth. Slip it <laughs> into Pierre's mouth as he's yeah. gasping and, I'm like, and calling out for help. It's okay. <laughs> he's reluctant at first, but to be honest, he hasn't got much strength to fight against it and swallows the berry down. He feels a sudden urge of vitality return. Not much, but enough to save off death. He notices as the, as the bleeding ceases. He's still gravely wounded, but perhaps not about to die anymore. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Who, who are you? Who has come to help? Oh, that's right. He can't see us, can he? No, he cannot. Hmm. What? Well what should, I'm, I'm talking to the others in the inner ear thing, like, what shall we do with Pierre? I mean, he's a, he's he's basically dead and he's blind in a strange land. His whole purpose in life is to defend an island which may or may not be completely destroyed already. 
what version of help is help in your your cochleas your telepathic link so you can all hear this conversation going on in your heads Hmm. can i just ask what's going on with the crow at the moment crow's dead crow is like all oozing on the ground sort of like the the physical body of it is starting to melt and ooze away like turning into a pool of tar is there anything like left that looks useful or is it all just tar? you can have a peek or you can have an investigation if you don't go and get me me feet wet so there's all no right. other enemies the, like the giant wasp is gone as well oh giant, the giant wasp, wasp mine. is not an enemy yeah they would they were on uh jacks allies jacks Jack's slowly making his way across to Pierre and Killian. <laughs> While you make your way across there, Hans, could you roll an investigation check for me? Can. To be fair, I can move myself. You can move yourself. That's right. You can anyway. Eight. Eight. Why is this not updated on my log? Oh, it won't. Not on there anyway. An eight. All right. So you jump down, you hop down from the, the brambles, land in the thick ichor that's left from this foul creature. You start to slop your way into it. And it is like tar, like it's sticking to you as you slop around. You have to pull your foot free a couple of times. You put your hands down into it to have a feel of what's there. One gets stuck. You go to grab it with your other hand to pull it out. That one is also stuck. <laughs> you are now hands and knees stuck in this tar. <laughs> um, so pride is an issue at the moment. <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just stay here for a little while. <laughs> Try and figure a way out. Uh, Coconut, who is still up on top of the, the nest, is just looking down at you, co- a head cocked to the side a bit. Co- Coconut! <laughs> Help! <laughs> just sort of watching you for a bit as coconut is watching you and you are seeking a bit of help jack you do make your way over to killian and pierre pierre who is still asking who has saved him did you fell that beast the bird is gone it is the head cock slightly Voice. Yes. Who are you? Who is here? Yeah. You want help? No, no. Yes. Well, all this stuff, and I'm just like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the Starlet Tink, what would you guys like to do? You've seen. Jack sort of tumble over towards Kenny and Pierre. Pierre has relayed the conversation. Hans has jumped down. He's sort of disappeared out of sight now. You just see Coconut sort of peeking over the edge. Um, I think I'm a little bit confused. Did you say there's a third, like, a- another shadowy figure that we don't know who it is? You can't see that, no. Okay. Um... Can I see that? Alone? You can't see it, no. Okay. <clears throat> Do we know it's there? I mean, nope. So right. From well, that's marvelous. From our perspective, we're just uh, seeing Pierre asking for help. Okay. Yep. Killian has given him a good berry, and Jack has made his way across. And as I said, Hans has disappeared over the edge. How badly Did hurt I is Pierre? You, Hans? Oh, he's deaf story. <laughs> He's very hurt. And Tink, did you say you wanted to go follow Hans? So I think that someone ought to go and rescue him. He's disappeared well, you off. Don't, <laughs> you don't know, you know, if he's in trouble. He just he jumped off the side. Yeah. No one knows yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tink might have an inkling. She's gonna <laughs> fly over to the edge and have a peek over, and you just see Hans, hands and knees in this tar, looking up and whispering help to the dragon that now looks at you. And if you could see a dragon hold back a laugh, that's what you'd be seeing. <laughs> Wait a second. Hey, look at Scarlet moving by herself. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> that 
was my attempt to look like nonchalant. Just this is normal. Roll a deception check. Oh, deception. Because it is not normal. Oh, there we go. That's good. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, so you like, you look down, Tink, and you see Hans like on his hands and knees, and he just sort of looks up to you and being like, yeah, you know, I'm just having a search around. He sort of moves his hands around as if he's feeling under the tar, and he genuinely looks like he is searching for something in this tar. You have no idea that he is stuck. Well, I'll leave him to it then. He's... <laughs> Is it all right? I'll go off and do something else. As soon as she turns around, I say to Coconut, Coconut, get down here! <laughs> Roll a persuasion check for me. Um. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Coconut just sort of like slumps down as if she's <laughs> taking a rest. <laughs> Lays her uh, uh, head on her arms and just carries on watching you. Enjoying the show. That drag. Goldie wouldn't leave me like this. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Goldie's looking on from the hedges. <laughs> yep. Laying some eggs. <laughs> Scarlet, you make it down into the pit. Tink, you fly across too. See, now you've all made it towards Pierre, who has come into the realisation that his saviours may not be as friendly as he thought. Jack's uh, taken a knee and has gently grabbed his hand. It's just like, it's believe it or not, it, Pierre, it can't pull away. I do. I don't. I right now, I just want the best for you. You've got, you've got broken leg. You're blind. You're in a strange land, and your home, your, your sworn duty was to protect the land that last we heard was suffering a giant earthquake, and you have no it's idea of how to get back to your poetry. You've destroyed everything, and can, you leave me here to die. Can you repeat that? Did you say you've destroyed everything? Yes. Okay. I don't need to leave you here to die. Then take me back. There may be time. I may be able to save Elliot. What would you do? Everything. You're blind. <laughs> you can't walk. We then can hear use... me. You have the power now? I don't, know about, I don't know about healing eyes. The odd the, the odd scrapes from a battle are different from losing body parts. We could put one in the back of Coconut if Coconut is okay with that. You could be at peace. There is no peace anymore. Not unless you return me. That figure, that shadow, is still standing above Pierre. But now it is just looking at you, Jack. Do we know why Pierre is here? You guys brought him here. Oh, we did? <laughs> yeah, he was, like, yeah. unconscious and we brought him for a portal. <laughs> and then, like, you had him prisoner for a bit, and then he... Yeah halfway escaped and you decided to let him go because you had more bigger things to deal with yeah so he ran off into the fey world and then you at one point you did hear a scream from above as the bird flew over the crow and then when you came looking for the crow you found pierre here mutilated uh... we don't even know how we're getting back we don't know where we're going to get back we don't even know if we're going to get back And I'm certainly not dragging your half-dead corpse across a weird land with giant, murderous crows. You are the leader of this party, then? No. I'm just offering you choices. You can be here to die, 
or we can let you out the easy way. If you want. The easy way. The words of a hero. No. Who said I was the hero? We never claimed to be heroes. Oh, I think that is that exactly what you claim to be. I'm your just adventures you... to save the world. That's why you could not help me, right? Because you had bigger fish to fry. You had to save your own world. You did not care if it's mine. That might be true. Do you care about ours? I care about everything. What I was protecting was everyone. Every living creature on our plane. But leave me. If we help you. to die in this hell of a month. You've got some apologizing to do, I believe. If we even think about helping you. You slew my only companion. What do I need to apologize to you for? I cross my arms. And I look over you at Tink. Can't see them. Oh, true. <laughs> 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 a little recap Pierre did want either Tink or Scarlet to stay with him to become his mate and prolong his line right uh, uh, we did offer uh, to no. bring someone across uh, if he wanted it uh, later and it, in case in case this was lost it, it wasn't him just asking nicely when we declined it became forceful it was yeah, he stay here out. or I'll kill you with a dragon Right. Hmm. But to like to him, he had to do it because if that land was unprotected, a enormous giant would eventually rise up and crush the entire world. Like, Did that's he what explain he said that properly, happen. though? Because um, you know. Yeah. But whether you believed him or not, well, I mean, you guys didn't because you punched him out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the other thing that Frontier was like, no, I don't actually agree with that. Let's just punch his legs out. <laughs> I think there were some kicks Which to was the fair. nards, too. Yeah, there were yeah. multiple kicks yeah. to the nards. Yeah, she was making sure that he would never be prolonging his line again. Right. But now here he is, battered, bruised. He was at death's door. He seeks help. But not does not believe you will give it. While you guys uh, contemplate that, Hans, how are you getting on? Uh, I'm trying to speak what? <laughs> um, <laughs> try and get the attention. Occasionally, <laughs> over the cochlea, you hear you keep on hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like some feedback. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a a time to put tobacco on. Yeah, roll up as a performance check for me. Hey, no, not bad. 18. Not bad. 18. You do manage <laughs> to get out a few buzzes. And, like, there's this part of you in the back of your head, you're like, I know. Wasps, bees, they don't just communicate with sounds, do they? It's like movement, dance, and you start wiggling around in that tar while you're buzzing about. And you hear something approaching. The tipper-tapper and the flutter of some gold wings. Oh. The wasp doesn't really care, but Goldie heard you struggle. Uh. <laughs> wandering along. Honk, honk. Goldie, help, help me. Goldie kind of looks I at you. Know, I know you understand me, Goldie. <laughs> Slightly confused at the situation you've got yourself in, but you are a good friend to Goldie. You've shared drinks, you've shared battle, and she's going to go in and she's going to grab hold of your arm and start pulling. I'd like you to make another... A, I'd like you to make a strength saving throw with advantage, please. With advantage. Uh, 20. 
20. Not bad at all. Yeah, so pulling together with Goldie's help, you do free yourself from the tar bird. Ah, oh, thank you so Don't much. Not gives a, a snort and kind of turns away from the I scene. Start climbing before he turns up before she turns away. I start climbing rapidly up towards her. <laughs> <laughs> Jump up onto the nest. Twigs and twigs and leaves clinging to my tarry hands and feet. Oh yes, I'll and never hair. know. <laughs> Do you know when, when when you said that Goldie was coming down and was going to grab me? I thought you were going to say that Goldie was going to grab my flask and fly away. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you'd rolled lower on your performance. <laughs> you guys are buds. We are buds. Yeah, you are free. You're next to the dragon. Coconut has turned away from you. I jump on her and start wrestling. <laughs> and while that goes on, let's return to Pierre. So, so I think I'm going to um, I'm going to go a little closer to Pierre. Oops, closer to Pierre. And kneel down. And I know he can't see me. But I'm going to say... Listen. We're not evil. At least we don't intend to be. I'm not 100% sure that you're... Or convinced that you're evil either. But you posed a threat to us. And we had to take care of ourselves. I think both of us are doing what we think is right. And we can't promise anything as far as being able to take care of you or nurse you back to full health. And like Jack said, we're, we are in the Feywilds. The time and space is crazy here. We have no idea where or when we're going to return to anything. And then I look up at Killian and I kind of give him a nod. And I, I, I say, you know, I do have a companion who is large enough and strong enough to carry you besides that we can't we can't make any promises about your safety but i think it's there is still a possibility that our group might be open to having you come with us and you know doing putting some amount of effort into helping you get back to out of the Feywilds at the very least. I don't know if we can help you return to where you're, you're from, but we might be able to come up with some kind of solution to at least getting out of Feywilds together. With the little strength that was returned to him with the Goodberry, Pierre does manage to just sit up slightly, leaning over on one arm as he does, and looking with his blank, slashed eyes towards the voice that came from Scarlet. It is uh, an option I cannot refuse. You have choice. Accept your help. You can, keep your with, choice. you can keep with this pain. Or we can... Make it easy. You can fight on. Blind. In pain. Barely able to walk. Or you can let it go. Pain has never been the problem. I can live with it as long as I live. I accept your help. Jack's going to use Withering Bloom. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Go on then. Um, Wither and Bloom is uh, a Constitution 15. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do a great roll because I don't have his stats in it. Oh, look at that. That's an actual 20. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. 
Oh, a little dragon just flew on my screen. <laughs> in which case, he takes four damage. Well, I mean, he had one HP. Well, no, he didn't have one HP. He had probably about two or three, but he definitely did not have four. So you guys watch as, as Pierre accepts the help from Scarlet. And he goes to lean forward a bit more. And Jack reaches out and the land around him begins to die away. Are the plants going to wither, uh, wither or bloom? Um, the plants uh, wither. Um, and in my brain, the plants wither. And as Pierre is reaching out, he just start kind of sorts to crumble. I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. Yes, you what? It's and... almost like you know, the mummy. The, the skin just tightens. The the like water is drained from his body. His skin becomes grey and dark, and you see the skull begin to appear through his face, and then it starts to flake away and crumble into dust, leaving nothing. But a skeleton of Pierre still in that pose before it crumbles into a heap. And I just want it to be known. I could have healed with that spell and I did not. Oh I know. Did you have you made that known to everyone? Nope, I'm just making it known to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Above table, I could have healed myself with that. And I chose not to, but out of respect for the dying man. I, as I, as I, as I'm watching this, um, I was over here. I kind of take a couple steps back. Uh, my eyes widen. I look at Pierre now dead, or assumed dead, <laughs> and then I look he's, at—he's pretty dusty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I look at Jack slightly uh, slightly horrified mm -hmm. questioning and and in th a split like two or three seconds i kind of go from wondering is jack a bad person and then also kind of going back to understanding of the idea of putting someone out of their misery um, Could you roll a perception check for me as well? Yes. Scarlet. <laughs> perception. I forget how to do this. I go up here. No. Yeah. Should be skills and perception. Wait, it's... Should be on your skills tab. I see the While you're... skills listed, uh, but I click on it and nothing <clears throat> happens. If you click on the um... plus button, it should roll a dice for you in um, the the long list. Yeah, in the long list, right? Uh, yeah, so the, the number is... on the right hand side, mid bottom. I see I... medicine nature yeah. perception. I see the word perception. And nothing is. Yeah, happening. Do you see the plus? Do you see the plus three next to it? I do, and I click on it, and nothing happens. Nothing happens. I can click it for you. Why is nothing? Holy shit! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Jack's just like staring dead eye into a person that none of you can see. <laughs> so I just rolled that for you, Scarlet, and that was a. 21. What was it? 21. So pretty good. <laughs> so you, as you're like looking at Jack and thinking of what just happened, you notice just for a brief second, his eyes sort of ink over black just briefly. And then the ink disappears away. Back to his no eyes. And it's almost like, did you see that? Like, was that there? You're not sure. Can you? I'm so sorry. I was trying to still figure out what was happening, um, and I was not listening to you. Did you say I, I see something? <laughs> yes. So as you were looking at Jack and having these thoughts, you saw for a brief moment his eyes inked over black. So it was like black liquid oh. just sort of went over his eyes and then disappeared again. And it was just, it was so brief, you're not even entirely sure if you saw it. 
Huh. Okay. We just said that for. Think, Killian, you've just, uh, you're about to walk away thinking that you're going to grab Coconut and get this uh, wounded man out of here. And now he's a pile of dusty bones. Right. Uh, I mean, probably best in the long run. What were we going to do with him? Like, and you know, poor sod, all the rest of it. Uh, but what do we do now? Like As you kind of going to stand up, here. turn around and wordlessly try and make his way over the nest. I'm not anyone sure what's happening, but... Anyone got this well, problem, bro? I, <laughs> I see questions oh. what he was going to do next, though. You guys all hear a sound. The sound of battle. Fighting breaking out. Branches breaking. Grunts going on. Kit Scarlet, you hear Coconut make a yelp on top of the nest. Hans, I'd like you to make a, sem- a strength saving throw. Mm-hmm. Fourteen. Fourteen. Coconut wrong, pins bro? you down to the, the nest, pushing you down into the brambles. And, but you just managed to pull yourself free and roll out before jumping in for another tackle. Didn't you help me, you fucking dragon? <laughs> <laughs> she gives a snap on the shoulder. Not actually bites him, but showing you that she could take that entire arm off if she wanted to. <laughs> I start scratching her belly. <laughs> uh, the battle subsides. And the scritches continue. <laughs> Appreciatively. I look over the um So all 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 of them are down on the floor, yeah? So I yeah. can see under them. Yes. Um can I see the eggs that are in the in the little middle? You can. In the nest? Yeah. You can. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Eggs. Are they covered in dust? I mean uh... <laughs> <laughs> they might be a bit dusty. Oh, I wouldn't know. Hans knows what that is. <laughs> natural, you know, forest dust. Ooh. I hop down and start going over towards the eggs to investigate. Hans hops down. You guys, like, watch as he jumps and lands on the ground. You just uh, hear the, the battle from above has ceased. Oh, what's going on? Oh, you can... Who's moving, Hans? I am. Oh, you can move yourselves. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hans can't because yeah, he does. He's sharing. But thank you. No, you can you can move it. Go for it. Jack's quickly got out. The but, before he oh, gets it's not to quick. Eggs, though, <laughs> before he gets to the eggs, he's gonna hop down right in front of you all who have just heard this battle going on up up top. I mean, to anyone me, have anything to say? <laughs> to me, it seems like just another day with Han. I don't know. <laughs> How does everyone look? Hans looks fine, right? So I don't think I'm gonna I mean, question it. He he's covered in tar and <laughs> bramble and bush and leaves sticking out of his hair and his shoulder and yeah. yeah. That. How, how do Pink, Scarlet, and Killian all look? Will I pick up on any? Very good, actually. Oh, well, actually, you know, yeah, tell you what, roll a perception check for me. Let's see if you can see the tension in the air. Mm. Yeah, me just dusting, dusting stuff off my shoulder, you know. Nope. <laughs> I don't notice a thing. Nope. <laughs> yeah, you're, um, you just think that, yeah, it's the, the, the deal is done. You've killed the bird. Time to reap the rewards. That was fun, guys, and I give Killian a big... Pat on the shoulder as I walk past him. Your hand kind of sticks for a second before you pull it away. Oh, <laughs> perfect. <Yeah. laughs> Leaving loads of like, yeah, twigs and leaves on your shoulder. Thanks yeah. very much. All this black stuff's the gearing on my shoulder now. Yeah. Even though there's still... then you step over. Go ahead. Carry on. I was going to say, even though there's still all this kind of tension in the air, I <laughs> upon seeing Hans, I just kind of close my eyes slowly, let out a big sigh and shake my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know what kind of group you're in. 
Hans, you make it towards the eggs. You have to step over the remains of, I don't know, something, some dusty skeleton here, probably ancient, to be honest. I get a little bit on my feet. A little bit. Yeah. Ooh, wipe it off. Oh, no. Oh, I will. You should, you should you do find an, three eggs. You should do an athletics check, see if he actually makes his way over without falling into it. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> it would, but I think he's suffered enough so far. Oh, I'm so athletic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so eggs. Egg eggs. eggs. How big are the eggs? They're pretty big, actually. Each one is sort of about three foot. So about your size, actually. Are they scaly like they look in the... <laughs> they're not, no. They're, that's just the only eggs I had. They're oh. actually... They're smooth, but tacky, as if they have, they're made of tar, but almost dry tar. Like it's just, you, you wouldn't get stuck to it, but it is tacky to the touch. Can I put my ear to one of them? Yep, it's your ear is stuck to the egg. You're going to plant your ear on the, yeah. I, yeah. I wait, I wait there and try and look, <laughs> look normal. I'm gonna. I, I'm. Oh, what am I gonna do now? I'm Goldie. <laughs> I'm watching all of this. Like I watched Hans go over there, and I was a little bit. I almost yelled out to him when he was stepping out to pee, uh, over Pierre's body, and then now I see him. I see him stuck to, or maybe I see him stuck. I see him lean down at least to the eggs. Should I t roll something? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, you can. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm just gonna say, yeah, like, uh, Hans, what are you doing? Nothing. Uh, can you see Goldie? <laughs> not really. <laughs> I turn around. From where no, you are. not from here. No. Uh, co coconut. And then you just, you just, you see me start dancing and buzzing. <laughs> Coconut does wander over a little bit and look over the other side and watch down. And then you just see Coconut shake her head. <laughs> a little puff of smoke comes out of the nose. Oh, can I lift the and egg up turns away. With, my, with my ear and... Put my hands yes. aside. You do. You you grab hold of it and you go to pick it up. Roll a strength check for me. It is the same size as you. Oh, can I it's actually hear small. anything from the egg? That's the whole point of me putting my... 13. You pick it up. It's a bit like unbalanced being like picking up another version of yourself that's egg-shaped. Um, and roll a perception check. See if you can hear anything in something. I think... Oh, nine. You can just, you know, when you sort of like cover your ear and you can you can almost hear your own blood flowing. Mm -hmm. You get that sound. That's all you can oh. hear. The inner workings of your ear. Is it warm? Is it like? No, it's cold. It's really cold, actually. Not like freezing where it hurt, but it is cold. Oh, OK. Well, I'm useless now, so... <laughs> But you have picked it up. You can <laughs> with your head stuck to the side. Jack, what are you up to climbing onto the nest? Jack's just staring off into the trees, trying to soothe you himself, petting a giant wasp. Yeah, that's fair. The wasp sort of sticks by your side. You stroke it carefully, avoiding any stickers. Yeah, as I, as I said, Jack just after that, after locking eyes with Talona, stood up and just silently, slowly walked away. As you did that as well, you did notice that while you was looking at her, she just faded back into shadow, disappearing. No, nothing more to say. But it seems that she was appeased. For now. Jack feels like shit. 
So how did we I find mean, it? you did try to kill your friends to take your, you know, female party members as his sex slaves, so... Yeah. I feel too bad. <laughs> Still. Still indeed. So, what are we doing now, party? Jack's got an egg. Not Jack, sorry. Han's got an egg. Jack's got an existential crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got a bag of holding. We could put that egg in. I'm attached to the egg. Should we all take an egg? <laughs> put Hans into the bag, too. <laughs> <laughs> I go over and grab an egg because I feel like I should be taking stuff, too. Go for it. You can even move yourself, Killian. Maybe wear some gloves first. You might not get the gloves back. Don't put your ear on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so similar to with Hans, like you, you go to egg and it is tacky. Like it's not super sticky unless you're going to press a body part right up against it. But you are able to lift it. It's you know, it's quite big and cumbersome, but you are bigger than it. So you pick it up. <clears throat> it's not gonna be easy to get out of this nest though. Hmm. I, I roll it over the edge of the nest. <laughs> or this part of the nest anyway. Yeah, as you do, it sort of picks up twigs and branches and even some remains. Okay. Roll it's, it in the dust, it'll be less sticky. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's going to be like wearing snowballs at the end. It just gets bigger and bigger. Yep. There is one egg left. Who's hungry for an omelette? Yeah, but what if they're not like empty eggs? What if it's got like an actual <laughs> bird thing in it? I was thinking we can we have a new pet. Them. Yeah, we could train them and fly them. That was what was going through my head. I I, I ask over the cochlear. Um, there's anyone check and see if there's like any goodies? On the on the floor or around any any valuables? Can anyone see anything? Where's the French guy go? Uh... Jack just starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I'll get the egg off. You don't have to cry. More importantly, is there a, a papa crow? Oh. That's a great question. That is a great question. Yeah, because hey, Mama Crow's here looking after the eggs, but where's Papa Crow? Go is he gone hunting? How do you know it wasn't Papa Crow that was looking after the eggs? Uh, nature. Uh, normally, <laughs> Mama Crow looks, you know, like, sits on the eggs while Papa Crow hunts, doesn't he? I don't know. I don't know. It, a lot, of, it, fem a lot of female animals are the ones that go out hunting. So all I'm saying. I think most female bird birds are bigger than the male birds. Interesting. There you go. It might be one of those weird, <laughs> like, like um, angler fish, where actually the male looks nothing like the big bird, and it's actually just this tiny little globule that attaches onto the big crow. <laughs> Now you got to think, was this the papa or the mama? Because if it was the papa, how fucking big is the mama? <laughs> I think we should go. I am beginning <laughs> to think that um, exiting stage right might be the sensible thing to do. We've been sort of here a little while, and I'm assuming it's still fairly dark and miserable, and probably not Maybe. the sort of place that you want to hang around for too long. Yeah. To be fair, the Fey world hasn't seemed to change from day to night since you've been there. It's always a perpetual twilight. But it isn't the nicest area to be in. So our mission is now complete. That one. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I mean, one mission at a time, yeah. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so we can go back to the cat now. Your choice. You guys can do anything you want. Guys, I've got an idea. For those who can and don't want to go through the bramble, I'm going to clear a path. 
So I need everyone to clear away from the nest, and I'm going to cast Thunder Wave. All right. Whereabouts? Right where coconut is, so... So, <laughs> right... <laughs> You're going to clear a path right to a pile of sludge. Okay. I don't know the sludge is there, do I, so... No. Technically not, no. So, yeah, I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> go. So, is that uh, an attack roll, or is it a save? It's a... Cast a spell. Uh, I don't know what it means. Let's go. And have a look and see. So, Thunder Wave. So it says attack save con 13. Alright, so it's a save. And this is a bush, so it cannot make it save. So, full damage. Roll your damage. Fifteen. Oh, I'm totally in. Sorry, I'm in the map. Oh, nice. Hey. <laughs> oh, yay! Good job. I'm, I'm so. getting coconut left because I don't want to. <laughs> Killian looks ahead, casts his thunderous blast, and it does. It blows a hole through the brambles. Fortunately, these are quite big and they encompass quite a lot of space so you actually just sort of blow out a tunnel that goes through to the other side coconut feels a bit of a rumble but is still purchased on top it's a bit more precarious than it was but you have created a tunnel through the brambles into a puddle of thick tar what is that black stuff nothing <laughs> <laughs> while um while he's doing the thunder wave, I head over to Scarlet and I I ask her like, "Oh, Scarlet, can you help me get the egg off? It's stuck to my ear." Um. Don't tell the other guys; they'll lose respect for me. <laughs> I let out a little giggle, but I I try to be serious and I look. <laughs> Um, Do you have any butter <laughs> or, or margarine? Actually, do I? I remember. Um... I remember when I left. I brought like a bunch of baked goods and like bread and stuff <laughs> <laughs> when I left my house. You did. It has been some time since then, and okay. I will assume you guys have been consuming it on your rest. Mm. Um, and just those some... old pastries are well and truly gone. Looks like I'm fresh out of butter. I look around to see if maybe there's like a stick or something that I can try to wedge between the uh, Han's head and the egg. Oh, there seems to be yeah. a lot of thigh bones. Oh, oh, oh my god! Say, yeah, there's there's plenty of sticks, but there's a lot of bones too. <laughs> I'd rather use a stick if possible. I mean, grab one, yeah. There's a whole nest made of them, so you can always go grab a stick. Right. I go over and, and grab one of these berries and squeeze it over Han's head to see if I can, you know, lubricate <laughs> it a bit more. <laughs> you mean a good berry? Uh, are these good berries? <laughs> oh, the purple things. No, yeah. those aren't even berries. They're like little pulsing hives. Hives? Poke it. Oh, yeah. Did you did you grab one? Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. Roll a constitution saving throw for me. Oh, 23. Hey, that's good. Not bad. So as you grab it, it starts to rumble a bit more and pulse a bit faster and then it just erupts in your face and you are covered in this purple sticky you. Not as sticky as tar, though, and you're able to just wipe it off. Fortunately, you mm. closed your mouth instinctively before it squirted on you, and you don't take any ill effect. Okay, well, that's the last <laughs> idea gone. I'm just covered in purple now. <laughs> Scarlet, roll a strength... Uh, just a strength check for me, but with advantage, because I assume Hans will be helping you pull this thing off. Oh god, my ear comes away with the egg. Net twenty? <laughs> Not bad at all. <laughs> you just sort of, you, you stick 
the stick in between Hans's head and the egg, and you just use it like a lever and pry him off. You feel your ear just, uh, it's pulling, it's pulling, it's pulling, and then it comes free. Ah! Oh, <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Ah! Oh, I thought I was going to be stuck to that forever. And I just give him two strong pats on the shoulder and <laughs> kind of turn around. <laughs> when she pats kind the of shoulder, weird. he smacks my ear back into the egg. <laughs> No! <laughs> Rinse and repeat. Stick, leave up, pull. <laughs> you get a look of, please don't do that again. No, no more. But there is a hole. There is a hole to get out with the eggs, though it does mean trudging back through the tar. Let's do it. I mean, for those that can't fly anyway. So obviously, you can fly. Well, I'll do that then, because, you know. Are we only going to take the one egg? Oh, did you load your map as well? I did. Hey. Awesome. It's exciting. Oh, I'm going to try no, and jump Killian. over it. All right. Um, what's your um, walking speed? Walking speed is 30. 30, so you can jump 15 feet. Uh, if you went at a right angle, you might be able to make it. I'd like you to roll an athletics check for me. Athletics. Athletics or acrobatics? You know what? Scratch that. Dexterity. <laughs> Dexterity saving throw? Nope, just a check. Okay. Scarlet, can you help me get out of the, the nest? Because I've got the big egg. I can't see where I'm going. Yeah. Huh? Um, so if you like grab hold of the <laughs> back of my head. 17. And then lead 17. me out backwards. I lead you out backwards. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so as Scarlet and Hans are sort of maneuvering each other to get out of here, Killian, you just deftly jump across. You just make it over the tile. You almost fall backwards slightly, but you use the weight of the egg to push yourself forward and you fall away from the tile. Which direction was Free it? Free of the nest. So you jump, you would have jumped over here. I can't see. Over here? Yeah, yeah well, I meant, like, literally where I put you. <laughs> oh. Just there. Okay. Oop. There. There we go. Right in front of Goldie. And Scarlet and Hans, you're going to, what, you're just going to walk through the tar? Well, Scarlet's leading me because I can't see because I've got the big egg. Um, yep. Do I? Sorry. Do I know the tar's there? Uh, I mean, you have eyes, and it's it's pretty big and widespread. Unless you are fully going backwards this entire way, do you think you would look where you're going? I would or just walk backwards. I would look where I'm going. I'm just pulling Hans by the back of the head, so he's backwards. Got you. Um, yeah. yeah, so you can see the tar. As you, so as you got sort of get over here, you guys start walking through the tunnel. Yeah, I'm gonna walk through. You'll see carefully. Right. You put a foot in, and it gets stuck. You pull it out. Another one it's starting to get a bit harder to pull. I'd like you to both make strength saving throws for me. Oh wait, saving throws. You're uh... a couple of yes, please. You're some strong guys. You should be able to do this. I didn't... Is anyone else's game log updating on the map, by the way? Mine is. No, it's not. Mine's not either. Oh, Mine's yours? not. Mine's... No, mine hasn't at all, but I need... I've got my game log open on my phone. I'm not sure why. Just curious. Mine's updated. It says 32 seconds ago, so... My yeah, last I mean, roll probably... from mine was from November or Je December yes, or whenever it was. Same. I think if I refresh, it might work, but I don't want to refresh just in case I can't get back into the map. Same. It, might, it might depend on the browser. For some reason, I'm using Edge, you know, Microsoft's own one. And it seems I'm on Brave. Brave? Interesting. Yeah. I'm just on um, Chrome. I've never heard of that. What's Brave? I, it's got, like, built-in ad blocks and Brave? VPNs and stuff. It... <clears throat> Protagonist Merida? Pretty good movie, actually. I love Brave. <laughs> I just got that there. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so what did we have? 22-16. So, Scarlet, you do get stuck a couple times, but with Hans's momentum and sort of walking back towards into you, he he pushes you free each time you get stuck. And slowly, you make your way through the tar with the egg. You're all free. Fantastic. Now we're on the other side. Who has the bag of holding? Who does have the bag of holding? Who does have the... We didn't leave it in the mushroom town, did we? (laughs) No. Whichever one of you, you'd like to have it. I do not. I suppose I'm the strongest. So... Would any of you have left the bag of holding with Hans? Yeah, maybe not Hans. (laughs) I'd like to hear some yays or nays. I'd recommend whoever is good at, like... Uh, um, I think I have the bag of holding. Oh, fantastic. There we go. Yeah. Does it have a wide enough rim to put the egg into? Yeah. You might need to push it a bit. Okay. You know, squeeze it around, pull out the sides, really jam it in there. Yeah. Can we do that, then? If you so wish to. Yes, that's what I want to do. I have a giant. I have a golden talon from a giant bird in my bag. Was that what? Was that important? I, I think just... that was from when you were attacked. Um, the talon was cut off and left in you. Oh, so you, you you claimed it. Right. Okay. Golden. Fantastic. Well, maybe I just think it's golden. And it's just a rotting. Yeah, I think it was just the colour. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gold. All right, so you you ram a couple eggs into your bag of holding, drop Trust a talon in there, or are you I'll, keeping that on you? I'll add the three eggs to my bag. I believe it was only two. Two then. We left one in the. In we the did, net. unless someone else wanted to pick it up. Can we send the dragon? It's up to Scarlet. It's her dragon. Goldie, go get the egg. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> she looks at the tar and looks at you and just sort of sits down. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Goldie. She saw what happened to you. <laughs> um... So we're going to see the cat now. There are two tinks on the board. Are there? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! There are. <laughs> oh. One's an assassin. Did she? Attacked. Did she cast a spell <laughs> like a mirror spell? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been when I was playing around with the tokens. So I we can wonder why Tink was still up there. <laughs> Where's Jack? I'm. Moping. Oh, there's two scarlets. Why are there two scarlets? I did that. I, I was <laughs> just seeing what would happen. Okay. <laughs> Jack, come on. We've got, we've got to go. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Jack's caressing sure. his wasp. Caressing Jack's gonna, his wasp. <laughs> like, just let the, the wasp gently bring him down to the ground. <laughs> 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 okay, shall we, uh, shall we head off, guys? Yeah. Yeah. yeah what actually yeah, sure. did happen to the French guy? Never, never mind. I just look over at Jack from where I am to see how he reacts. How do you react, Jack? Just, just kind of stirring in the space a little bit. He's <laughs> just kind of staring at his feet. Yeah. And seeing this, if I see it, uh, I kind of makes me concerned. But I keep it to myself mm. for now. Okay. Are we heading out? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, to make your way back, 
I'd like Tink to roll a perception check for me, as she is the compass. Oh dear, yeah, right. Okay, hang on a minute. Go on, Tink. High numbers. <laughs> so it's in your minute. skills, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. If you press the plus next to it. And then, um, Cogtunes. Can you yes. just uh, let us know when is a good time for a small break? Right now, Would actually. Would now be a good time? Okay. Yes, just in fact, I was going to do that after this roll, because okay. <laughs> while you guys are traveling, we will take a quick break. Anyone Did that you wants say to perception? stay, have a chat. Yes, perception, please. Because I need a wee. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> You're uh, 19. 19? Oh, it's all the 18th, huh? Hell yeah. <laughs> but either way, so, as everyone decides it's time to make their way back, you sort of stop for a brief moment and think, oh, wait, how do we get back? And then, Tink, you close your eyes and you concentrate on that feeling inside you that draws you to the rift in the dimensions, and you feel for that dark energy, that cold, cold place, and you pinpoint the location and take your party in that direction. And as you make your way there, we are going to have a quick break. Good job. Nice. Nope. Be See right back. See you in a moment. Have any of you been playing Valheim? No, I haven't got around to it. It's really, really good. I heard that when it came out, and but it's like. I don't. I don't mesh well with the big survival games. No. No, I just. I. I. I need more extrinsic motivation. <laughs> it's like that. That all those survivor things. That like the long dark, all that kind of stuff. It's mm. just it's so up my street. Like. It's I brilliant. was. I was recently playing one called Windbound, where you like. I've it's heard... got the survival, survival elements, but you also like you make canoes and it's got sailing and stuff. 
Yeah. And like, I liked the core mechanics of it. And then I got to like the third level, the fourth area. And then was like, it's just going to be more of this. But I just gave I it think I've, I what? think I've seen what this is going to be. And there's another like, there's another three of these afterwards. Yeah. I, I think I think I've seen what this game has now. I can understand that. Like, they, sometimes it can feel a bit grindy and a bit like work rather than an actual game. But I just love all those, um, like those games that have really still. Well, the graphics aren't brilliant, but they get really atmospheric music and really nice. Colors. Oh yeah, but like, like I've, the long I've dark never... has such pretty colours in it sometimes. Really, really, really good soundtrack. I've never been a big like graphics over anything else person. Partly because I can't afford very expensive graphics cards. But in it, right? <laughs> I mean, I've been running at below mid-range specs for as long as I've had a computer, pretty much. I've li like literally earlier on. I'm sure I told you earlier on in the year I got a Steam Deck, and that's the best mm. computer had in my life like <laughs> you know and that's like nothing compared to what some of these rigs people have oh god yeah it's just yeah, it, like it's not future proof is it what game are you talking oh, about as soon as you buy a computer it's out of date basically steam deck like no, uh, well this is the thing like computers can be more future proof because you can just like upgrade the graphics card rather than buying a whole new thing but honestly i don't think it's ever more cost effective than buying if you want to buy a console every 10 years or something yeah yeah i need to get the next console like, like if a console costs you 500 600 quid and a, the top of the line graphics card costs about you know a few thousand yeah I've been putting then again i've had in the, new the same graphics i've had the graphics card i've had for I think since the last generation of consoles, at least, and yeah. it's still it's still keeping up. For I'd, I've not played any of the like cutting edge graphic games, as I say, it's not a big thing for me. But everything else runs fine. Well, I think I'll be getting about three on console rather than uh, yeah. rather than Steam Deck. Let's just put it that way. Like, I'll yeah, afford to get it on a computer. Although it's a must to get. Um, I've heard that you can do, you can literally do anything you want on it, pretty much. What game is that? Sorry, Baldur's Gate. Oh yeah, you can, basically gives you freedom to do anything you want. It's yeah. I read somewhere that um, there's a mission with goblins, and mm -hmm. you can, you can choose to smear poo on your face. And Why? Yeah. Yeah. It has uh, options that hounds will do. It's something to do with getting the goblins to like you, and basically <laughs> it, it, they all talk about how you've smeared poo on your face. Oh. And it okay. gets you into their little goblin gang. Yeah, so any option that hounds would do, you can do it in the game. <laughs> Don't worry about that. It's got to be... Uh, it's gotta be and, and also, a really nice little... Um, it shows the dice, doesn't it? It shows the dice roll mm. if you do something. Yeah, and you know all them checks that you get that the DM asks you to do, it does that automatically whenever yeah. you approach certain areas. Yeah. Which... That's a lovely little um, lovely little thing to put in there. And and it's so in-depth, the options that you get to choose. They've, they've counted for every option that you, you can possibly do. Like, if you skip certain areas, it'll it'll you know count that in it's just so open and big you know massive map yeah i've really got talking about borders mm. yeah naturally i i was playing mine and i wanted to clear out one part of the mission before i started going down the the gaic or whatever it is uh path yeah, the cleared out the goblin camp and then found out that the um uh the crash the main person for that one just fucks off if you take too long or if you do the other quest first. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've heard some really good stuff about it. I did, I almost got it because I had a little bit of money that I had, you know, to spend on some fun things. And I went into the game shop 
and asked if they had it, but there's no physical copy of it yet. Uh-huh. Oh. I, like, I had cash to spend. Yeah, it's only digital for now. Yeah. They're, they're talking about like a special edition that will come out physical in a while, but currently it's just digital. So I didn't get it. But I did get um, Tears of the Kingdom instead. What's that? Zelda. Zelda. Yeah. Oh, I've got to, I've got to get into Zelda because my pal at work's been saying that, um, like Call of the Wild and yeah, Breath, Breath of the Wild. Of the Wild. Like yeah. The yeah, they're amazing. Really good games. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It took me a while to like sort of get the hang of it again after playing Breath of the Wild because like by the time I finished that, I was so overpowered, and then you get sort of like reset to the beginning. And I'm running around trying to kill everyone, and they just wiping me out with one hit. There was a lot of rage quitting. <laughs> <laughs> no way! I can't imagine. I can't imagine the uh-huh. rage quitting. Excuse me. There may have been some rage, but I did not quit. <laughs> I stuck with it until I killed those bloody goblins. Oh, dear. <laughs> I like having Carrie on these calls. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> There was this little this little camp, like three goblins or moblins or whatever they're called. And like they kept killing me, one hit killing me. I'm like, I'm not being killed by a bunch of goblins. So I'm not running away. I'm going to kill them. And it took ages. <laughs> but I eventually did it and I killed them. And they had a little fireplace. And I went to leave. And you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to rest at the fireplace, heal up. So I rest up. And so there's this thing that happens in these Zelda games where oh, the moon God, yeah. turns red. And when the moon turns red, all of the enemies that you've killed respawn. So nice. after my rest, when I when it woke back up, it literally just plunked me in the middle of the three goblins that I just killed. Oh my God. Huh. And they they blew me up. <laughs> 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 I remember doing that for, um, I think, first time through I played Fallout 3 on Xbox. So it was taking forever to load everything anyway. And then mm. it auto-saved where I came around a corner and, like, a super mutant came and smashed with me within about five seconds, and there was nothing I could do to get away from it. But it auto-saved me at that point, and I was like, yeah, I think I'm done with this one. <laughs> I, do it on purpose. I do it on purpose. Yeah, but I did eventually kill them again. And got out there. And now I've got the hang of it again a bit more, so I'm not dying as much. As much. <laughs> it is fun. It is fun. I enjoy it. I got that and I got Mickey's um, Illusion Island, which is, I play that with the kids, and that's really fun to play as well. There's so many games. Anyway. There. So many games and no time. I know, right? Are we all back? Are we all ready? Hi. Yes. Yes. All right. So. You made your way. With uh, Tink's perception check, she is able to direct you guys back through the Fey Forest. Good job, And once Tink. more, you find yourself at that split in reality, a tear in the fabric of the plains, leading to some pocket dimension where a strange Fey creature, or maybe even not, maybe something beyond your comprehension exists. Are you going to all step through Game. Yes. Yeah, on the way back, on the way back, Jack's kind of come to the realization of how hurt he is and has eaten about ten good berries. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Like, if you wanted to ask for any healing while you guys were traveling, um, do some, we need to some of you can heal. Mm, a short rest before we go in there. I mean, I could short rest. Go. Sure. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, most of you are okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just me. Uh, Jack's Jack's expendable. We can uh, we can carry <laughs> on. Jack's a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> did um did we pick up on? Did I pick up on any like? Yeah, any frostiness on the walk back? Any sort of um ro- roll a perception for me. Let's see. Oh, I, didn't, that, I didn't pick up on it straight away, but I've had time to uh, to understand. Yeah, you guys are back. Oh, oh my! Hell no! No, everything is is great. You guys killed the oh. big bad. You're heading back. You're going to get some prizes. 
You got eggs? Good food. Fantastic. Uh, I've never seen Jack so happy. <laughs> come, he's coming back just round. Contemplating what he's going to get. <laughs> yeah, right? That's, that's what Jack's thinking about. Have I even noticed that Pierre's missing? Not really. I mean, to be I fair, he wasn't times. with you. Like, he wasn't with you at this point. You guys found him at the nest. Yeah. And he did not return with you. We saw him flying over above us, didn't we? I mean, you saw a bird flying over and you heard a shrieking scream for help. Yeah. I'm not worried. I'm not loose sleep. Now nah, yeah. you killed the bird. He'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. If we find any... If we find any water on the way back, we could perhaps have like a bath because I'm I've got this purple stuff all over me and hands. I'm sure you could use one. I have I'm never. Sure you'll find a stream here and there. What what what's and about? Say, we'll say for the sake of the narrative, there were no crazy monsters in that stream that would pull you in or try to seduce you or any shenanigans. You managed to clean yourselves up. And arrive safely at the tear in reality. Before we do, <laughs> Jack's <laughs> like on the walk back. I think uh, Jack's gonna uh, like kind of pull Scarlet to the back of the of the queue as we're walking <laughs> to have a little bit of a chat because he's bit he's he's kind of stepped over Scarlet's toes there at the end there. But fair enough. Um. Scarlet, what do you know about gods? Gods? Like, the gods. The gods. Um, that's a good question, DM. How much do I know about gods? To be honest, when it comes to the gods, as much as you would like to know um, on the face value about their existence, if you want to delve deeper into specific gods, you could roll a religion or a history check for me. Oh, good. I have bad religion. Oh, that's not terrible. Fifteen. <laughs> Fifteen. So, yeah, you know the existence of the gods. There are many of them out there, many factions that believe in them. There tends to be a god for, uh, like, you know, you've got the, the god of death, and you've got the god of war, and you've got the god of the harvest, and all these areas that certain societies base their their religion on. If you have decided to dedicate yourself to any of those, that is your choice to make. There is a god of the hunt and uh, nature, you know, the, the wild mother. Interesting. Okay. Um... Has, has Scarlet not encountered one? Or was that no. just Hans and Killian? <clears throat> no, I don't think you have. Scarlet oh. had her connection with the the dragon that you guys saved. Yeah. Not with a god. Oh, god. So I'm going to... In it's going to be a weird conversation. Yeah, in my response, I'm going to say, well, uh, I've, I've, you know, heard about different gods. I try to live my life in a way that, uh, you know the what do you call her mother wild mother the wild mother wild. says is right i don't dedicate my life to the gods or anything like that why do you ask well we've been we've been traveling together for a while i'm sure you remember that uh, <clears throat> the witch hag creepy lady in the shack outside of what was it called? Dinnington? Yeah. Dinium, your home. Dinium, my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> I know the name. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I remember the, the witch. So, like, since I wore that rat cloak, oh. this cloak, like, you know, it's changed, it's changed material magically a couple of times. It. That's why I can turn into, well, why I originally could turn into giant wasp things and rats and stuff. Okay. It turns, it turns out, 
it belonged well it's a an aspect or a possession of this I don't know if they are a god uh, they told me explicitly they were not a god they were it's uh, like essentially the embodiment of death Talona is what they called themselves and if I want to keep having the powers I had to when they called upon me <clears throat> kill people and the first one they've picked out was Pierre oh and I as as he says that I kind of feel that sinking feeling in my chest because I I did have that feeling of wondering if if he was if he had like turned evil or whatever back when I when he first killed Pierre but and even now I don't think that he has turned evil I believe him um but let's see so as Scarlet I'm saying wait okay uh, does does this does this make you a warlock uh no no it just means i can you know as i say i can do the 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 wasp and the rat thing and i believe i, I think part of the the cloak is you know i can do i can climb you you know i can climb You've noticed I can climb things really fast, probably. Yeah. And I look just awful. Like, from when you first saw me, I look different. I've got pointy teeth. I, I just, you know, I'm just having done the first deed. I don't know if it's worth it. And I've kind of been keeping it to myself because it's not been important. But you had a wish for what we should do as a group. And I did ignored you and I did it myself. And I feel bad. Not just because I killed a person because we have killed a lot of people. Yeah. It's not good. I don't like it. And let's face it, Pierre was not the nicest guy, so it's not that I think I sh we should have taken a man who was basically dead and thrown him into a world that he might not have been able to survive in. But I also disregarded you and the group, and it's bad, and I know that. And... I don't know if I want to keep doing it. Right. If it's worth it for what I get out of it, and I just felt like I should tell you because I've not told anyone else this, and partly because it sounds crazy because I met a god of or a embodiment of death, and it's weird. Okay. It's a lot to put on you. I apologize. No, I. But I also. I understand. I think it's good that you told me. Um, honestly, I, 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 I kind of offered that uh, that option to Pierre mostly because I I have also felt guilty for the blood that we've spilt as a group and not knowing if uh, you know trying to re to have some kind of redemption. <laughs> And be able to convince myself that I'm, that I'm a good person, that we're good people, because I'm not a hundred percent sure that we are. Sometimes I don't think. Again, like we, like I said to Pierre, I don't think we're evil. I don't think we're bad. But I'm not convinced that our actions have proven that we're good either. But I get that. Um, 
but yeah, realistically, I don't think Pierre would have survived even if he came with us. That being said, I'm also, you know, I have concerns about you <laughs> having, having a pact with these gods. Uh, but I don't know much I mean, about the gods of death. Are they inherently evil? But, but, I don't know if you remember. I asked the cat, the big cat thing, indirectly about whether I was evil or had that aura. And it kind of knew what I was talking about, it, or something, it, it explicitly said it wasn't good or evil, and, you know, if it, it's not, as I, as I said, T Talona claimed to not be a god, it claimed to be before gods, or different than gods, or, and, let's face it, death is death, death comes for all equally, it's not evil, it's not good. Right. But then I have to choose, if, you know, if I don't want the powers and it wants me to kill something that is, in my point of view, good, do I follow through with that? Is that something I can abide? I've always, you, you know, I've, I've always been those with power should help the rest of society you shouldn't hoard power you should share it you know you should better society the, the the best for all not for one and i don't know how much of that i'm doing and it's a good a good point that you bring up as well if uh if talona asks you to kill one of us for the sake no. of your powers how do you have the ability no, to God, say no. no I can say no I don't have to do it um, from what I understand I lose most if not all of the inverted commas blessings I've been bestowed by the Cook. So, if I think it's worth the cost, then maybe I do what it asks, but for one of you guys? No. 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 In that case, I think, I think if you get to be the judge at the time of whether or not you choose to follow through with it if it's not just a blind you know objective that you have to do it in the moment I think for now I think that it is if you feel that it's not damaging your character too much I think it is worth it. I think you're a good enough person that you're trying to use those powers for good. Um, I think that means something. And thank you. And I think that, you know, for all the foes that we've come across so far, I mean, it's certainly been helpful having your abilities and we're, it seems that we're only going to be encountering worse and worse things to come. Yeah. I think we can use all the power that we can get um, to be able to fight the evil. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, you can trust me with this. I won't tell any of the other party until you do. Um, Thank you. But please feel free to come to me whenever you need to, to talk about this again. I appreciate that. Genuinely. Again, I, 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 I know I've known Hans longer, but we've been traveling longer, and that's why I came to you. Yeah. You know, we've been through. You know, I, we've we've killed witches. We've been through mines. We've 
came through it after the decimation of my hometown. You sat with me. Yeah. You understood me when I was we were fighting that Kraken and you know Killian bless him just saying, Go for it, you can do it and and you were you were just trying to support me in a hard time and I appreciate it. You know, if I can ever do the same for you, let me know and I'll be there. Thank you. I I the way things are going, I'm I'm sure I'll I'll be able to uh to take you up on that sometime. <laughs> so we'll, we're all, we're all going to be there for each other. And Jack's just going to give Scarlet a great big hug. And I will obviously return it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I've never seen him so happy, honestly. <laughs> 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 and now you I never gives out hugs. Him. He's got to be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> He's ecstatic for what's to come. And what is to come? What is to come through this? This rift in dimensions, leading back to that strange giant face of a cat. Here we are at the threshold. Everyone, are we stepping through together? Should we yeah. hold hands? Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yep. Hand in hand, you step on through. Ooh, fancy. Fuzzy. Mm. Here he Very, very. Who went, I would seem to think went first because she is the one leading the way. Let's chuck everyone in here. Scars, Jack. And uh, let's not forget Goldie and Coconut. How could we? How could we ever forget Goldie and leave them behind in a battle? It's impossible. <laughs> well, considering you don't have like the control over her as you once did best to Listen. keep her safe right do we have to keep bringing that up <laughs> i literally <laughs> separated half a bag of beans for someone to trade <laughs> i'm not entirely sure a bag of beans was going to cut it to be honest i mean it's a magic set of beans that could grant you any boon as far Jillian as they knew offered up his magical heart and it wasn't enough that was partly due to the poor roles and inability to use it at the time, though. <laughs> it's okay, Gillian. You do it when it counts. <laughs> anyway, you make your way through. Everyone and once more, you plunge you sometimes. into darkness. And that darkness begins to subside as your eyes adjust to the very dim light in here. And you once more feel that soft underfoot the furry body of this entity whose face appears before you. The eyes open, glowing, ethereal wisps spreading out. <laughs> you return, and successful, I do think. <laughs> I feel that the bird has no more. Well done! Well done indeed. Thank so, I do believe that there was a reward. Now, I've had time to peer into your essence. And I think I've come up with some suitable prizes for such that have done such an accomplishment. Destroying that evil being. Pure darkness, those creatures. <laughs> but it's gone now. So, shall we see what we have in my little bag of tricks? Or perhaps the deed was enough. Ridding the world of some evil. That's enough reward for heroes like you. <laughs> so, you got. Hmm, quite. Down to it then. Let's have a look, shall we? 
And the cat opens its mouth wide, and you watch as this long tongue unravels like a carpet, Ew. laying down on the fur below. It's almost leathery rather than, you know, it's not moist or bumpy. It's like a, a leather rug unraveled. And as it does, these sparks of energy begin to glow. And one by one, they appear floating before you. So. And even though the mouth, the cat's mouth is open and the tongue is unraveled, it's still able to speak clearly to you all. You just hear it echoing throughout this entire realm. I present you a choice. There is an item here picked out for each of you, for your own skills and desires, but there are other choices as well. You may pick one of these items, or I can grant you a boost in yourself, increasing a skill that you have, or I can help with your knowledge. Open up a part of your mind that you couldn't access before. Granting you the ability to understand a foreign tongue that you couldn't before. The choice is yours. A new language. A new skill. Or one of my pretty trinkets here. Who would like to choose first? <laughs> Well, above, above board, above game. What counts as a skill in this case? <laughs> so this is actually going to be, you can add a, you're going to get a, um, you know, like when you level energy. up, you can get an extra, you can increase your skills, you know, your okay. strength, wisdom, constitution. Yeah, so strength, oh. wisdom, constitution, uh, charisma, and intelligence. Am I missing one? Uh, strength, oh, dex. Strength, Dex, Excellent. Con, in Wiz, Wiz. Yeah, so you can get a plus one to one of those. You can learn a new language, and that's written, speaking, and listening. Or you can choose from the goodie bag. There are five items floating before you. Do we see them, or is it just, like, a mystery? No, you can see them. They're glowing. They're almost uh, spectral at the moment, glowing with light and floating up in the air, slightly rotating around. If you'd like to have a look, I can tell you what you see. Definitely. Yeah, what can we see? Because then we can make a decision, can't we? <laughs> Might not be something we want. For your eyes, Susan. you see a book. Leather bound, thick with paper. Floating. You see... A pick for an instrument floats in there. You see an arrow, but upon the arrow, instead of an arrow head, there is a grappling claw. You see a pair of boots with wings fluttering at the ankles. And you see a shadowy pair of scissors. Hmm. Who would like to go first? <laughs> Perhaps my fey kin, the fairy. That would be Ting. I'm thinking. So, Do Coconut and Gordy get anything? <laughs> I thought I'd ask. <laughs> it's a fair question, my dear, but they get what you get. They're part of you, are they not? Yeah. Goldie's their own being. Goldie has enough power. So I think, think that. Would you like to hear what special item I chose for you? Yes. And then you watch as the, the pair of scissors float in front of the rest. And they are like they're dripped in shadow. 
not just black scissors, but almost like smoke. But what solid at the same time. These, my dear, are the scissors of shadow snipping. <laughs> With them, you can relinquish those around you of their shadow and take command of them yourself. <laughs> Quite the skill to have, I think. Controlling your own shadow puppet. <laughs> or you can become stronger. Or learn. It is your choice, of course. It's a very difficult choice. <laughs> mm. All the fun ones are. Hmm. Oh, I feel like it would be useful to be stronger um, and also to have another language. But I have a feeling that the scissors things will come in useful at some point. Everything I, I offer is useful. Yeah. But you're a tricky one and I'm not entirely sure I trust the tricky ones. <laughs> You have done me a service. You rid the world of a bit of evil. Hmm. This is all I wish. I am, um, after all, the Archfey of Happy Thoughts. I think I'm going to go with the weird scissory things. <laughs> Excellent. And you watch as they float down towards you, and the the energy surrounding them dissipates. And they drop down into your hands. And as they do, they actually shrink down as well to fit your palm. So you, you can pocket them easily and use them just like a normal pair of scissors. Oh. And all right, I'm going to add those to your inventory. So you can have a look and see what they do. And while I'm doing that, who would like to choose next? Don't be shy. <laughs> I want to go last. I take a step backwards. Okay, um, I, step, I step forward. Um, <laughs> so, I'm guessing the pick is designed for me. Ah, the captain, of course. The captain and the musician. <laughs> With this pick, any instrument you play with it, oh, the power that you will possess will increase. Your spells will be stronger, and those that must save against you will be weaker. A great boon, I do think. But your choice, of course. Increasing your own skill sets can be just as useful. And yeah. learning a new language, who knows when that might come in handy. Yeah, what's intelligence and wisdom anyway? They're my weak points, but you know what? I'll, I'm just going to take the pick. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I love it when my trinkets are taken. So, Tink, you now have the scissors of shadow snipping in your inventory. If you go into your equipment, you'll see it and you can click on it and either equip it or just have a look and see what it does. And I will go into you, Killian, and give you your new pick the pick of destiny. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because it's the pick. <laughs> yeah. Except that's not exactly what it's called. I think I call it the pick of face in this. Oh. But that's absolutely what I was thinking. Of today. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> there we go. You now have your pick. And you may also equip that and have a look at it and see what it does. So the captain and the fairy have chosen. Who else would like to choose their prize? Step four. I'll go next. Uh, okay. Of course. Which of the the full-hearted barbarian? Which of the items? To... Which of the items? See if you can choose. Have a look. What is left? We have a book. We have an arrow, and we have some boots. The book's not going to be for me. Um. Do you know what? 
I'm going to go for a skill. Mm, if that is what you choose, you do not wish to hear the specific item that I picked out for you. First thought, best thought. Nope. Skill. <laughs> Very well. <clears throat> and you watch as the winged boots. Oh, this magnificent pair would have given you the ability to fly. But, oh well. And they disappear. That's fine. So, what skill would you like to increase, Hans? So, when you say skill, you mean the top one. Strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. Now, keep in mind, it's a plus one. That does not mean a plus one to your roll. It means a plus one to the number below. Right. So certain increases won't change your role. Can I see if they will? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. So yeah. Go, I'll tell you what, I'll go in. Tell me of any that will increase my role <laughs> on any of them. Let's have a look and see, shall we? So what's what you at the moment? Um, let's do this and have a peek. Pardon me. You know what? No. For the story's sake, the character arc, I'm going to be Tin Man. And, uh, oh no, I'm going to be Scarecrow and wish for a, wish for a brain. Oh, you want to increase your intelligence? And I'm going to increase, in, increase intelligence. Well, I don't think that's going to do anything, but yeah. you can gradually increase. Gradually increase. You could. Yeah. I mean, this is a free upgrade, so you know, like you, later online, you'll get it with your levels as well. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, increase intelligence. All right, increase intelligence by one. Here we go. Did it work? It did work. You now at six. Result, which is still a minus two, but hey, that's good. Actually, it might be. Was it minus three before? It was minus three before. That's good. It was a minus three. There we go. You that's just increased your intelligence. I am only that's great. Yeah, that, I mean that's <laughs> way better. Yeah. Well done. So. The, the the cat looks into you and its eyes shine bright and you feel your eyes glow and your mind just becomes a little less cloudy, a little less confused about all the information that's been constantly bombarded with you. Ah, you take a sigh of relief, feeling just a little bit more smart. I get out a colouring book and start doing a crossword on it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Hans is always known to carry around colouring books and crayons with him. <laughs> All right, so who was left? Tink, Killian, Hans, you have all chosen. I hope that they benefit you in some way. Jack. I guess I'll take a step forwards. Step ahead. Uh, um, what do we have left? We have a very nice book. Or perhaps you'd like the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's for you. <laughs> Above board. Um, you can't naturally increase your skills above 20. No. Would this mean that next score improvement I could take it to 20... Well, yeah, take it to 21. Do you have anything that... I've got... I'm on 19. If I took this one to 20, would I be able to take it to 21 after that? Or it just... Happen no. Um, but if, if it was at 20, then he could probably magically 
increase it but because it's not yet your natural right. progression won't be able to stack onto this magical one unfortunately oh. okay um I need to look through my skills quickly uh fighting 15. I'm sorry what do you mean by it can't it can't be more than 20 you add up the skills numbers? so um so underneath on your yeah on your skill list where you've got strength dexterity constitution that you'll see your your plus number and then underneath that is a another number usually a bigger one um that can only get up to 20 and i think 20 is a plus five yes 20 is a plus five but that is as high as you can put your skill without like magically buffing. increased yeah so Jack was just wondering if he could get a, an extra boost up to 21 using this kitty. Wait. Um, oh. Which, to be fair, actually isn't that great anyway, because if I can only get it to 21, it's still the same as getting it to 20. Um, exactly. I guess I'll take the book then, because my next greatest score is dexterity, and that would still be at a plus two regardless. Oh, you could increase something that's a bit low. Ah, well, no. Um, Seem a little unsure, my dear Next. Friend. Hmm. Yeah, so Scarlet, you are... Your... Your strength... Your strength is 17... No, no. So, so it's not 17 plus, plus three. Oh. No, it's 17, plus 3 is your modifier. So because you have a strength of 17, when you roll your strength checks, you get plus 3, because it's 17. So, I could so like, if it was it 20, yeah, you could. Um, if it was um, 20, you'd get a plus 5 to your rolls. Uh... So the harder that number is, the better it increases your roll, but it doesn't do it for every increase. Right. Like, there is a sort of a range of the number like so and so to so and so will be plus one so and so and so and so is plus two got it and so on okay thank you i was really confused by that <laughs> thank you no worries hmm yeah so jack you you're a little uh doubtful about my my prize you know what this is do not i do I'm just trying to work oh, out what's the best in the long run. Fill it with. <laughs> mm. Could be very useful. I. Yes. It's yours. Uh, Jack has been had a day of making. Trying to think his way around a decision that he doesn't agree with and is just going to grab the book. <laughs> All right. You reach forward and the book comes to you. And again, that glow disappears as it clamps in your hand. You feel the thickness of it. This is filled with paper. The amount of spells you could fit it with. Oh, tantalizing. A wonderful choice. <laughs> I one day hope to see that book filled. <laughs> but for now, we have one more. Please, Scarlet, step forward. Come claim your prize. Is there a skill you wish to better yourself at? Is there a language you've been dying to learn? Or would you like my arrow? Oh, the things you could reach with this to be able to fire the grappling arrow. Does the grappling arrow just yeah. grapple? Is there anything else that it does? It is a grappling hook. So if you fired it up, it would magically attach itself to wherever you aimed. And then hold the weight of up to... Uh, let me have a look at you. Well, to hold you and Jack and Killian. Or it might even hold four of you if the smaller ones grab on. I'll take it. You could pour things to yourself. <laughs> uh, quick and decisive, that's what I like. 
and the arrow sort of spins and aims at you and then fires towards you just for you to catch it in the air. And I'm going to add the arrow to you and Jack, we will we will add your feature mm. as well. I'm just gonna do Scarlet Fence as it's a bit simpler. If you were in between sessions, if you want to choose what spells are in it, or if you want me to choose what spells are in it. It's meant well, to be the, the book will be blank. Well, the feet but you should have two say, spells. Yeah, it does. But this is a blank book that you can so you can choose. Like you can choose okay. the spells. It's gonna allow you to to add your spells into it. There you go. So let's add that to your equipment. That is done. And then let's go over to the Jack. Add his feature. Manage feats. And ritual. Where is it? No, that's an S. Ritual caster. Druid. There you go. <laughs> You can now ritually cast. Woo. Ah, well, my friends. A short time we've known each other, but it's such a great act you've already done. And I hope there are many more to come with these new gifts I have bestowed upon you. I do appreciate what you have done. Well, things may always seem a little jovial here, but they have to be when you're surrounded by darkness and the evil that I <coughs> drain into here. I must lift my spirits any way I can. <laughs> but there is much more evil out there, and I know that you are on your own quest. You're trying to save the world. <laughs> but that bird was one of many. And I'm afraid to say one of the weakest. Throughout the realms, evil has coalesced, solidified itself. It plays or though you may think you know evil and you fight for justice and right you are merely fighting for choices these are not choice they are destruction and death and decay and soul destroying entities I wish you to seek out them remove as many from the realms as you can if you do not wish to do this on my behest, at least watch out for yourself. And should you come across anything that oozes evil, take it out of any out any hesitation. And if you do, you can always return to me and perhaps pick one of the other gifts that I offered. <laughs> Mr. Cat. Yes, um, my little one. We have eggs. It takes a big breath, sniffing in its feline nose. You hear a hiss. Yes, you do. They are not prizes. That the spawn of that evil being. Leave them with me and I will deal with their evil. You do not want to be around such things. Do we get a prize? <gasps> oh, you do lighten the mood, don't you? <laughs> I think these ones will be my gift to you taking them off your hands. Trust me. You wouldn't want to travel with such darkness. Darkness um, only spreads. Can I... Does, does he look like he's telling the truth? Roll a an insight check for me. I think a few of my rolls have gone, but this one used to be a minus two. I mean, it's still a crap roll, but... But it's a bit better. 
But not well enough to see anything through the face of this being. It's hard to read an entity that's all teeth and eyes. Its teeth have returned now after the last gift was taken. The tongue rolled back up and it began to speak from its mouth once more. Now we... I mean, as far as you know, it speaks truth. Now we only took two of the eggs, didn't we? You did. I ask over the cochlear. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys think? Should should we trust the uh, the cat? We can always go back and get that last one if we uh, if we think he's being a bit sneaky. Well, we've had no reason to not trust him. He's he's followed through on his reward, giving us rewards. And he wants to get rid of evil, and these will be evil if we hatch. I'm inclined to believe him. I think we should give him the eggs. Yeah. 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 Seems unanimous. Yeah. Give him the eggs. Uh, okay, I'll pull you get the eggs out. out. Yeah. And I'll place them mm -hmm. on his furry belly. As you do, you watch as the fur sort of grows around them and pulls them down into itself and they just disappear beneath the fur. The slight wince in the face before it returns to its grin. <laughs> Thank you. And if you wouldn't mind on your way back out of the forest, take care of that third one as well. <laughs> Thoughts are very fickle in my realm. Okay. But you were Koki. taking us back to the material plane after we killed the crow. You know how to get there. Return from the way you came. <laughs> of course. You have your guide, do you not? He looks down at Tink. I can you take it back, can't I? Of course. The greatest asset that you hold. She can take you anywhere. Right then. Jolly good. Okay we'll then. We'll be off then, shall we? Let's... Oh, if you must. I wouldn't mind the company, but I know. Small beings such as yourselves, they value their time. And you are awfully creepy. A little bit. <laughs> oh, thank you. I try. Well, off with you then. I hope to see you again. Right. So, should I just... Should we just turn and I'll just lead everybody off? Yes. Back to where we came through. We better stop off and squish the egg. Your choice. Did you ask if you're going to squish the eggs? Would you say? We probably need to go and squish. The, he said he asked us to squish the egg before we before we go. We didn't say squish the egg. So how does one get rid of a an evil tarry egg? Eat it. How does one get rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> Who has fire? Yo. Fire. Yep. Fire, yeah. Use fire magic and we can have a big omelette. Protein, baby. Or will it turn us into evil? I'm sure eating a, a tar like e pure evil egg will have no ill effects whatsoever. <laughs> I don't think it tastes very nice, though. <laughs> it might be a bit spicy. I think we're walking, we're walking that evil anyway. Kind of. Where's Pierre gone? <laughs> so you leave the the Archfey of Happy Thoughts realm, head back through the forest. Are you going to head back towards the egg, finish it off before you make your way out? We should probably finish the job, no? 
The egg? Yeah, I think we should go back to the egg. Yeah. Let's go. Alright, who's leading the way? Well, I think I better lead the way because I've got the, you know... Oh, wow. Could you roll a survival check for me, please? A survival check. Hang on. Oh. Yeah, well, you can find your way back. As there were no tears in that space. You got there from directions before. Guidance. Okay. I would like to add a guidance to that. Um, Go 13. Plus so a you can also roll a d4. So if you just press your dice button and yeah. select a d4, which is the triangular oh. one. Hooray. Oh, nice. That's 16. 16 is not bad at all. So you head back out. And you make your way f back through the forest, and you recognise it now. You're used to the Fey Realm anyway, so you're you're used to how it moves and shifts, and you can pick up on the slight differences and how to manoeuvre back onto the path you came. You guys do eventually get back to the nest, where the final egg remains, and that wasp is gone. <laughs> Bye. Let's go squish the egg. You also notice that the tar that was there has sort of seeped into the ground. There's still little patches, but it's not a huge puddle now. Making it easier to get back through the tunnel that Killian made. Can, oh, that's good. Can we show Goldie to you? What would you like to do to Goldie? Well, I'd like to pick Goldie up, mm -hmm. like like one picks a duck up, so like yep. from the side, <laughs> of course. and hold it in front of the egg, because I have a feeling that Goldie is inherently good. Mm. She can be like a goodness compass for us. Very well. Judging on how the duck reacts, we can we can take information from that. Okay, so I mean, you can manoeuvre yourself on the map now that you have it open. Take the steps that you wish to take. So I'm gonna pick can up, you move each other? You can. Pick up Goldie. I'll, I'll bring Goldie for you. Ah. There we and go. Walking over. And as you get close to the yeah, end, you do notice that Goldie begins to sort of push back. The neck cranes backwards, the wings sort of push in front. Oh, you know, Goldie I'll start. I'm not like being near this egg. I don't put it any closer to the egg. All right. She flies right. off away from it. Yeah. Get the axe. <clears throat> Squish the egg. Roll an attack for me. Surely the egg can't dodge, right? Can't dodge, but it has, you know, it's not always about dodging, it's about armor as well. How thick is the shell? Oh, my tits. <laughs> that just made it. It was a DC 10. I mean, I get a, I get an extra roll anyway, because I'm a halfling, but yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you rolled a one. Fair enough. All right, so roll damage for me. That last 12. So first hit, you go in, and it goes deep into this tar, and you hear it, even though it looks tar like it does crack like an egg you watch plus full fire damage splits open and then the burning heat from the axe fills its inside and you hear the popping and bubbling like a frying egg that's been fried too long and suddenly the whole egg bursts ruptures spilling the black fluid everywhere it splatters over your chest and face God. has the consistency of egg yolk, but is pure black. Gross. Nasty. <laughs> I just walked back like nothing happened. Gaining <laughs> the life. Goldie follows, but at a wide berth. Do you have a good time? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's fine. I'm taking care of it. I think that's important. Are through to the egg. Um, 
Now let's get go. Let's go get those supplies for our ship. That's a good idea. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, how long ago? <laughs> We're never going to see that ship again, ever. We're never ever going to see that ship. My ship. <laughs> 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 well, Tink, you want to guide the way? Right. You know the Onward, way. Onward, then. Onwards and upwards. So, Tink, I'd like you to make another perception check for me, please. A perception Twenty. Twenty, nice. nice. So once more, nice. you close your eyes and you feel inside for that tug and pull. And you feel those those three rifts that you felt before, the one that led back to the Fay of Happy Thoughts, that dark, cold space. For the one that heads up north towards a frozen land, and you feel the jungle breeze pulling towards the west. And that familiar sense of where you came from. That is the direction. That's the way we're going. Okay. We're going back to the boat. You're going back to the rift that you went through when you were in Elliot's lair in his cave, in Pierre's cave. We're going back to the boat? <laughs> What was that guy's name who we were fighting before we left here? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Pierre. You've asked about Pierre like five times I today. Wonder, I wonder what happened to him. <laughs> I whisper to Jack, like, stop pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe sometime, maybe someday you'll know. <laughs> It takes you a while to walk, right? And the forest does make some eerie noises while you make your way as well. The odd howl here, this strange, croaky hoot of an odd sounding bird. The ground is breathing beneath your feet. You wander past familiar sights where you were apparently playing a game of hide and seek. With a couple of dim-witted brothers, I hate that guy. once again see the uh, destroyed area that the clumsiness of one of them met you all in. Fortunately, no sight of the two, though. You continue your way until you see the orange glow on the horizon. And you feel the heat as you reach the barrier. Should the we take slick... a rest before we head back? In realms, well, perhaps you can, as you reach the fiery wall. The split between the Fae and the fire plane that, from a memory of Tink's mother, you saw was Greta pulling the plane forth into the Fae wall itself. But it was here where you came through, and here once more, where the door is back to your realm. Pop you all back on the board. Here we go. One by one, you make your way. I have a feeling this oh, is where Hans Fair enough, you do it yourself way. then. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I can. <laughs> I'm not too bad, like, I'm not awful for spells, but. You know, I could do with half of my health back. Do you have a long rest? Long rest, short rest. However. I don't think we need to make a fire, at least. We need to be prepared <laughs> for whatever comes on the other side of... ...of this gate. Of this yeah. Port. 
could be a very angry brother of that dragon that we killed. Or a it giant. It could also be a world ending giant. Mm. If only someone wonders about that. Oh well, we'll never find out now. <laughs> oh. Do you remember how simple things were back at the start, guys? Yeah. Do you ever wonder if life would have been different if we hadn't have if we hadn't had got rid of the lake and accidentally murdered a boy? Yeah. Yeah. Killed the royalty of a cloud kingdom. Life was simpler. If only I'd not picked up those fucking magic beans. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack goes into another existential fit. <laughs> <laughs> so you're taking a rest? Yes. Are we, are we short or long resting? I think a long rest while you can, no? I mean, I'm... I'm pretty good to help. A long rest would um, reset all of my, my weapons and whatnot. Magic bits and rages. If we long rest, I can burn all of my spell slots in good ber berries and I'd have 80. So that's like 80 points of healing to throw around later. I think a long rest is a good idea. We've, we've not got a rush for anything, really. Cool. Yeah, I'll rest it. Yeah. I'll cast eighty versions of good berry. Uh, eight versions of good berries. So I've got eighty good berries in my inventory. Can I? Is it possible for me to take a? I'll take a short rest and I'll keep watch because yeah, actually I don't really need a long rest. But... You can take a long rest and keep watch. So if you guys do it in shifts. Yeah, we'll do that. So what tends to happen is you take three shifts throughout the rest, split up between whoever would like to do them. Well, I'm very happy to do a, uh, a shift. I can do a shift. I'm pretty healthy. How do I, yeah. what do I do with the whole rest, short rest, long rest thing? Well, we will do that at the end of the rest, because right. you never know. Something might interrupt it. That's what the... Uh, That's what he says about. before he interrupts our rests. Yeah. yeah. Right. I've already <laughs> said I'm burning all my spell slots now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was a good thing to hear. Hey, uh, I'm back. Sorry, I got uh, interrupted, um, but I am back. No worries. Everyone's just deciding to take a long rest. Okay. And we need the first shift of who's on watch. So who's taking the, the first watch? To be one or two? I'll, I'll do the first watch. Gillian? I'll take middle. Uh, you do. Okay. Anyone going to share the responsibility with them? Or Tink, you're going to take the last one by yourself? I'll take the last one. Okay. If so, um, Jack, you just uh, collapse. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say if if I can get a long rest in, like at t essentially time frame wise, I can take the last shift or help with the last shift. <laughs> I would say that you are exhausted, and mm. even if you wanted to, you probably wouldn't wake up. Fair enough. <laughs> but you'll rest up. The last one as well. You want to take the last one? Yeah, I'll, well, I'll take the middle and last. I'm okay. Are you sure you don't want a, a long rest to reset all your things? No, I, I don't need it to. Um, I only need a short rest. To, uh, Fair enough. My key points to that uh, down, and other than that. You don't have, like, spell slots or anything you need to regenerate? Or any, like, <laughs> features on your axe that you've used that need recharging? Well, apparently it's just every, it's daily. It's not, it's not like, lift, it's not rest. Oh, yeah, right. So, That's cool. Um, yeah, it's just charges daily, so... Cool. Absolutely. Um, so, as most of you bed down for maybe the night, maybe the morning, it's almost impossible to tell in the Feywild, 
and against this wall of fire, darkness is nowhere to be seen. But you rest nonetheless, for you've had a long journey in the Feywild forests. And as you do, Killian sits up, watching the flames and watching your surroundings, just to make sure you're all safe. Killian, I'd like you to make a perception check for me. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm on the mobile. I'm just checking it real quick. It's all right. Sixteen. Sixteen, not bad at all. So you sit there and you kind of get mesmerized by the fire for a bit. You watch as it dances and you imagine the figures inside of it coming to life now and then. And then your eyes sort of shift back and it turns back into flame. You sort of wondered, like, was that just your mind wandering or is that just the, the Feywild being the Feywild? And you turn your attention back to the forest area. You hear the odd sounds, the critters and creatures that live among it. At one point in the evening, you do see a pair of eyes staring out at the group. You raise your gun, you point it out towards them, and slowly it turns and wanders back deeper into the forest. And nothing else happens for the rest of your watch. It comes to the end of it, and you, you go over and wake up. Hans for his next watch. Converse anything you'd like to before you take your rest. Did you see um, anything? No. It was I saw like usual Feywell stuff. Nothing really yet. I'm I'm just gonna go sleep. You and good luck with you all. Don't worry, I'll look after you all. Killian takes his spot on you are up. Is there anything you'd like to do in particular while you're watching over the party? Um, I think I'd just like to get Goldie. Is Goldie asleep? Can I wake Goldie up? It's nuzzled up. You can, you can bring her across. She sort of like wakes up groggily but still remains a little bit of sleep. I'm um I'm I'm aware that I am now cleverer. So I'm <laughs> gonna try and learn Goldie's language. Okay. Just in whispers. Whispered honks and quacks. You whisper away at Goldie and you hear the odd honk back now and then as she nuzzles in and rests her head upon you, dozing back off. But there's the odd sleep honk and you wonder what it might mean. You sort of come up with your own ideas, and though you might not actually be translating it, you think you're getting a pretty good job. You know what she means. Yeah. <laughs> At least you think you do. <laughs> Alright, roll a perception check for me, please. Perception. Ooh, five. Oh dear. Seems that you are a bit distracted in your pursuit of learning Goldie's hidden language. You're not fully aware of what's going on in your surroundings. About halfway through your watch, you sort of look up. And you could have sworn there were trees around that are no longer there. But you shake it off and think, oh, I guess they weren't there. To begin with, you must have been imagining but the Feywild moves around you, shifts and turns itself. And the fires begin to dance, flutter at your back. You hear the whispers in your mind. Come warm yourself. Come closer. Come to our heat. Hear the whispers seeping in from behind you, like crackles on a campfire. 
and enter your mind. I'd like you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, saving throw, sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Poop. You feel your mind filled with this urge. And you stand up against your will and turn to the flames. And you begin to step forward. One step at a time. <clears throat> towards the fire. As you do, Goldie's head that was resting on you drops to the ground and she does wake up and sees you walking towards the fire. The heat getting hotter with each step. Now you remember the last time you were here you were able to push through this fire unburnt by accepting the will of that fiery god within your dreams. But right now, though you feel that heat, you are in no control to push against it. As you take another step towards it, Goldie wakes up more and is going to let out a honk, a loud honk that is going to rise the rest of you as you hear Goldie shrieking in panic, her wings fluttering out. And Hans, you take that next step into the flame. And I think that's where we're going to end tonight. This is our first day back after a little bit of a break. And I know people are working early in the morning. I think this is a good spot for us to contemplate what's going to happen next. Before we head back to the main world. If... You make it there. Well, yeah, it's been great. Um, that's a good place to start. <laughs> I hope you've all had fun tonight getting back together. Yeah. I hope you like the new map system. Awesome. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's working mm -hmm. out quite well. I'm tempted to subscribe yourself. Yeah, it is really good. Um, like obviously, with with my subscription, you guys have access to this while we're playing. I just need to share you the link and you can control yourselves and you can even add bits on. And like I said, you've got the the ruler at the side there as well. You can use that for distant things that you just you grab and drag and it will tell you how far away stuff is. You've got your little pointer so you can point places and swirl around. Yep, that's it. <laughs> and you can and the best part about this I think is that you can move the map yourself. And zoom in as little or as least <laughs> as you want. And it doesn't affect anyone else's screen. I think that's really helpful for yeah. everyone to be able to focus on their point of view. I'm sure it looks better as well. I'm sure it's not in my head, is it? No, I like but, it. it. No, but, I mean, it probably does look a bit better. Because I, not only is it closer, but I can go full screen with it. So when I was doing it on my, my drawing app, I had to sort of... I would pull out the the picture sort of window and then zoom that in as much as I could, but not too much so that it would all fill. It was a hassle as well. But yeah. yeah, this is a lot easier. And I can still use all the maps I've made. I just pull them across to here. Real. So we have a, a little quick peek at what was beyond that door. Oh. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Is that the blood of the dragon? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but we'll find out next time on Beyond the Woods. Can't wait. <laughs> Bring it on. Uh, it was great Thank to you. see you all, to hear you all again. And uh, I had a really good night. I hope you had fun. A little less combat tonight, a bit more role playing, and you got some fancy new prizes. That was a really good session. Uh, yeah. nice. Can't wait to try out me pick yeah. a destiny. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Have a look at your items, see what they can do. Lots of fun things there. Cheers. I I mean that's a great thing that Hans has increased his intelligence, but oh you missed out on being able to fill up. I don't think I missed out really, because I I thought to myself like I can always get magic weapons. 
you can't, yeah. can't always level up like get a free level that up that is true absolutely i just i tried to customize each one for something that each one of you would need and i thought what does hans need it's like well he needs to get to people he's, mm. a, he's a puncher if something's flying up in the air how the hell does he fight it i can ride a wasp now like you can ride a wasp you can ride coconut or, or goldie like any any of the above <laughs> any of the above <laughs> or you can just become a giant there you go yeah so there's that so i gave you the choice because each one is helpful you know, even the language, who knows, in the future, there may be a conversation you over here that could save the world if you just oh, yeah. knew this language. I was wondering about that one. I bet it's going to be a really obscure language. So. You could have chosen. I actually, um, I was really hoping that someone didn't take that, because if, I, if I'm reading it right, as the ritual spell feat, I can choose the wizard spell list for the book. And one of those spells is Comprehend Languages. Oh, well, the book I gave you is a Druid book. Oh, that's the worst, <laughs> not the worst one. <laughs> Just decided that I'm not going to give you something <laughs> too overpowered. <laughs> well, in which case I want the spell increased. <laughs> <laughs> but it means you can ritually cast things, which can be really helpful when you've run out of spell mm -hmm. slots. Or to save your spell slots. But we've all made our choices. Certainly. Happy with our choices. <laughs> and we'll see what they lead to next time. Yes. I'll see you all again very soon. Yes. I hope soon. we've all got fun things planned as well. Mm. Yeah, I we'll can't see, wait to see you. What time is it again? Next uh, week? It's come around for about one. Come around for one. Sounds I mean, if you want to come early, no problem. But yeah, yeah I'd say, yeah. Cool, Get cool. there for one inch. Awesome, awesome. Alrighty. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Always invited, Nat. You know, I'm not going to help you get here, but if you've got a spare <laughs> you know, grand to fly across, <laughs> yeah. we'll make you a, a proper, proper British roast dinner. <laughs> I should have, like, I'm definitely going to have a barbecue again at some point and everyone should come and you should fly over just for a barbecue <laughs> and one session of D&D &D all together yeah honestly I have thought about like the final session and I was like god if I had the money I'd like I'd get everyone together I'd have like a proper full setup with lighting and maps and everything. Oh, proper cool awesome. roll style. What you have about yeah. final session? It's gonna last forever. <laughs> get the uh, get we're, never gonna, we're never gonna get the supplies for the ship, so <laughs> <laughs> no, never, never. Get someone with a three D printer and print out oh, all the uh, the models for the. Uh, yes. For the... Absolutely. There's so many things that I've planned ages ago. Like so much to, to come. <laughs> Some of the maps I made like over a year ago. Oh my god. Oh my god. I, I, was, uh, I saw a story about this guy who'd been doing D&D &D for like decades. And mm -hmm. the characters got to like god tier level. So we mm -hmm. came up with this story to like just take them all back to scratch. You know, by going to a different universe. And it was just amazing. Oh. Just reset and go again. Yeah. Oh, I have plans. I have many plans. Huh. The, uh, well, like, that's slightly yeah, concerning. <laughs> the final. <laughs> and if this is the final, if it comes to that final, but the one I had in my head, I have many plans for that. Of course, you guys will probably go a completely different direction, just like you did when you went and met the Fae of Happy Thoughts, who I absolutely thought you were definitely not going to pick the path that I said was the most dark and evil place that you've ever <laughs> thought of. I get that, like, are we evil? I think we might be evil. Like, or at least getting towards evil. Like, like yeah, the grey guys. Before. Yeah, it's a grey area. Chaotic neutral. Like, at the very least. 
Yeah, if we were if we were really playing on alignment, there'd definitely be some some movement on those. <laughs> <laughs> I think alignments get in the way sometimes, though. They pigeonhole you. I was surprised when, we didn't, when the cat's lair that you weren't going to get struck down straight away from the, some of the stuff we've done in the past. Mm. Yeah, your heart's in like... And as he said to you, many things that you think are evil are just choices. Evil is in the eyes of history, but true evil, that's the darkness that he is trying to hold. Ooh. We shall see where you guys will fall on the spectrum at the end of it all. <sighs> all right, then, guys, I'm gonna go to bed. Absolutely. Right. So I shall good night. Speak to you all soon. Yes, have a good night. Yeah, see you soon. We'll yeah. get up on you yeah. as soon as we can. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye